Welcome everyone to another episode of Get Tech Smart Global Explosion as part of the LinkedIn Accelerator Program, Technology and Innovation. I'm traveling around the world and putting a spotlight on underdogs in the tech sector uh, who are just really killing it. And today we're in Egypt and I am really excited uh, for my guest because what she's working on is, well, incredible. So welcome today, Wisam Shah Shahan. Uh, how are you today? How are you, Flo, today? Thank you Hi. so much for having me today and allowing me this opportunity. Thank you. Well, thank you. And thank you for the incredible things you're working on, which I want to spotlight right now. So you are a co-founder and CEO of pretty much essentially a biotech company called Incure. Uh, you are also a professor. But the one thing that really caught my attention is you're working in nanotechnology. I mean, wow. Like, let, let's just, how did you get involved in that? Let's start there because I told you before I hit record, when I think nanotechnology, it's usually in this like action movies, right? It's like the bad guy is trying to get nanotechnology and do massive destruction on the world. But that's not what you're working on. No, no, I, maybe sometime, but currently, no, no, this, this is not what I'm working on it right now. Well, nanotechnology began with, I began nanotechnology during my PhD. I began as someone in the pharmaceutical field. I had my bachelor in pharmaceutical science and then my master's in microbiology. But then I felt that I want to do something really different. And it was back then in 12, uh, 2012. Uh, nanotechnology was just beginning here in Egypt. There were just two universities uh, providing programs for nanotechnology, and I couldn't leave Egypt because I had small children then. So I enrolled in the nanotechnology program at the American University in Cairo, and I was amazed by it, the same as you, because nanotechnology um, touches every science. You can think of uh, cosmetics, construction, automobiles, um, uh, aeroplanes, uh, nanotechnology, electronics, it's in everything. So coming from a pharmaceutical background, I use nanotechnology to develop biomedical innovations as solutions for some of the biomedical problems. And that's what I've been doing from then. But now introducing it into the company that we're enjoying right now. Yeah, in a simplified way for everyone to understand. What mm -hmm. exactly is nanotechnology? Well, nanotechnology is like, um, it's going down in size. Uh, you know, we're all familiar with the meter, centimeter and some micrometer, and then we go to the nanometer. In the nanometer, magic happens because at this scale, the properties of the material that we usually know changes. Like for example, gold, we all know gold, this glamorous gold yellow metal. When, when it goes into the nanoscale, for, for instance, its color changes. You can find red gold, blue gold, according to the size. And this is a simple property that changes. Also the other properties, magnetic properties, electrical properties, all set of new properties develop. Silver at the nanoscale has huge, very strong antibacterial properties. Gold has been used to treat cancer at the nanoscale. Because this is how strong being in the nanoscale, uh, I, there was a quote that says that when we, um, learned how to deal with nanotechnology and nanoscience, we kind of discovered different periodic tables. We expanded the periodic table because every element now has a whole set of different properties. Yeah, I mean, that's fascinating. And, and you're essentially uh, working on the nanotechnology, but in, in the biotech sector. So what are some of the things that you are working on that the world needs to be aware of? Well, Again, I can take you to some steps or milestones in my journey. Um, uh, as I'm passionate about nanotechnology, I'm passionate about applied research. And by applied research, I mean I cannot be uh, totally taken except in research that I know that will end in a product that will actually solve a problem and be in the market. This is the research that I really love. So in my PhD, I started working on this kind of wound dressing. It is used in uh, deep and chronic wounds. And the internal structure of this wound dressing was a nanofibrous form. 
Why nanofibers form? Because it mimics the extracellular matrix of the skin, the natural structure of the skin. And this nanofibers, they, I, I, they were made of high concentrations of honey because it's very efficient in wound healing. And other natural extracts that uh, we obtained from uh, Sinai here in Egypt, it contains this whole set of medicinal plants that have unique properties. So this wound dressing had uh, a granted patent and it was the basic point of my first startup. It was called Nano Eber Zen. And in this startup, I had the product, but I learned other lessons which were very important. Being in the Middle East, uh, I wanted to manufacture this wound dressing, of course. I wanted to scale up its production. But then it depended on large scale electro spinner, which being here in the Middle East, we do not have. So I learned a lesson which I implemented in, a, in this current startup that let's start with technologies that we can scale their production here in the Middle East. And then when we will have the strong ground, we will go back to the higher innovations. So that's how Incura was born. Yeah. So start small, you know, scale big with, with the yes. tools that you have readily available. But I'm interested yes. in, in that wound, wound dressing that you have that's using the nanotechnology. Do you think that that's something, does it accelerate um, the rate of healing? Yes. On a wound? yes. Okay. Yeah. So wouldn't it be something that you think would be viable for like, for example, uh, soldiers, wounded soldiers? Uh, I, I feel like that you could market this uh, and, and it could blow up. You, you might not be able to scale in Egypt, but have you thought scaling outside of Egypt? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, uh, well, we had some interest from Italy and uh, recently from Germany for uh, this kind of technology, but we haven't reached it to a kind of agreement yet. Yeah. And, uh, but I, I didn't want to stop till I reached the agreement. I, I, I wanted to move in parallel directions and I'll take your word for the kind of battles because this is what we're currently doing in Incura. Uh, we have the sponge also that has a, ma a very high absorption power of blood wow. and it is used for bleeding control. And uh, this, is, uh, this is known, uh, this was the first product uh, Colibri care and then we had another one also for bleeding control it's a powder it's cure seal and it allows blood clotting in seconds both wow. products have a u.s patent uh we filed for them a u.s patent application and these products actually we are currently scaling up their production here from the middle east i, I believe it i mean you're you're th this is like stuff like i feel like i see in movies but you're in real life <laughs> working <laughs> On, on this technology, which, like you said, I think is crucial on uh, battlefields, you know, where, um, yes. you know, they're quickly trying to mend someone who's, who's bleeding out and having that type of a sponge that can, you know, quickly, you know, soak out and, and stop the bleeding. I think in the just even in the medical uh, sectors at, at hospitals yes. Uh, is yes. crucial. Yes. Yes, we, we were directing it first, of course, to the hospitals. You know, I had this kind of application that I was filling just this week. And there was a very interesting question like, explain your technology to a six-year-old child. Mm -hmm. So I just began writing it as a story where I actually see the pain. You know, as I said, being here in the Middle East, and these are the pains that I'm always exposed to, a lot, a lot of biomedical innovations are not present because they are highly expensive. Not because we lack the know-how. We have the know-how to develop these innovations. We just didn't, there isn't, I, 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 I always said, we have the mindset. We don't have the roadmap to right. translate them into actual products. So that's what we've been trying to do here. And I'm really happy that we're approaching to have such product in the market because when you look at some um, countries in Africa, you will find that half of the women dying from postpartum bleeding die in Africa because they don't have such a simple device as this sponge that can stop bleeding. So now we, when we can manufacture it here, we can provide it with an affordable cost that can reach and so democratize access to such important healthcare solutions. Right. I, I am just blown away and I feel like I'm going to see you on like CNN or all the other major uh, news networks, ABC. <laughs> Because what you're working on is is I I I, I am just incredibly honored to to talk to Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow, th this is amazing. Now, do you think that from your perspective, um, 
is it a, a funding issue, right? It, it's, yes, there is an ability to scale, uh, but it's not from a not wanting to be technologically advanced. Do you think some of it has to do with funding? I'll tell you what I really think here, because now here in the Middle East, in some countries like Saudi Arabia and Dubai, we have uh, this huge movement regarding to startups and funding and so on. But regarding deep tech and biomedical innovations, it's I see that it's related to belief. I've been asked last week, why are you doing what you're doing? What made you think that you can do it? And I simply answered, because we can. Not mm -hmm. me. We can. We, I, I saw, I, I, I taught for graduate students in the Wales well City here and different universities, and I saw amazing mindsets. Actually, in my startup now, I have this, my, my co-founder is an amazing mindset. So uh, these amazing mindsets have the know-how to develop these kinds of technologies, but we do not believe that we can actually do it. We can actually do it here in the Middle East. So when we go to VCs and uh, investors and they see deep tech, uh, manufacturing here in the Middle East? No. So I think it's about trust. So that's why it's been very difficult these past two years to find someone to really believe that we can do this. And um, and we've been navigating in a lot of channels. And finally, uh, Allah, alhamdulillah, have sent us a lot of uh, different people and uh, settings that actually believed in what we do. And um, inshallah, soon next year, you will see the products in the market, hitting the market very soon, inshallah. I believe it. I, I I really believe that I'm going to be seeing your products on the market. I, I think what you're working on is incredible. Hopefully uh, very soon. Sure. Yeah. And, and I think you touch upon something, um, you know, if, if you don't believe that your country and, and you know, where you are, it has the capability to, to build and, and scale, um, it will, unfortunately, you know, yes. tarnish your capabilities. Um, exactly. And what you're working on is, it, it's, it's, I'm a, it, it's just mind blowing. Um, the other question that I have for you is, how is diversity in terms of women uh, working in tech in, in Egypt? And what has your experience been? Well, I'll have to say that my experience in this regard was a kind of positive experience, actually. I've, I've moved in a lot of universities, and uh, I've always found an opportunity. And even the struggles I found, I think, were not related to be uh, to me being a woman, but sometimes to, um, yeah, well, we have other problems here. But uh, yeah, in this part, in the technology, in this part, I didn't find uh, it. Uh, related me to being a woman here, but maybe women in, in, in our region mostly struggle with um, if they have to succeed and uh, being a wife, a mother, uh, and do all of this, and also to reach to her full potential in what she loves doing, she will have to be a magnificent multitasker because, <laughs> yeah, she will have to like play it smart to be able to, to do it all because always she's expected to be first like the wife, the mother. And then if you have time, you can do anything else. So she'll have to write to do it right and she will be able to do it. Yeah. Because and she will she will have this like uh, passion, this belief inside that will allow her to do like amazing time management and do it. I think that's a struggle globally uh, for women uh, who are trying to have successful careers and trying yeah. to balance. Uh, yes. And, and provide quality time to, if you're married, to your spouse, uh, to your children, and, and to yourself, right? Because we yes. also have to make time for ourselves uh, yes, to definitely. try to prevent burnout. But, you know, and, but then also to what you're, you're, you're building, which is the career. What would you, what would be your advice? Uh, because what you're working on is, like I said, mind blowing. I'm still like, I, I'm still in shock. I'm talking to you because I really, I'm, we're going to see you on a global map because you're, you're wow. on biotechnology that is just mind blowing. Oh. What, what is Thank your you so much. I'm really humbled. I'm really <laughs> humbled by every word you, you're saying here. And uh, actually I've been, um, uh, although it's been a long journey up to now, but uh, I had very strong people working with me along the way. And that's why I'm here uh, right now.
Yeah. So what's your one piece of advice to any uh, woman or any person of color who I'm considering the underrepresented uh, tech dogs uh, or, you know, people who just not get in the spotlight they, they need? What will be your recommendation to how they can keep going and and succeed in, in, in tech? Uh, well, two points. The first, of, the first one, uh, believe in yourself. Once you believe that you can, you will. And the other point, and uh, this is I learned from the journey, keep moving. Keep moving every day, however the struggles, how much they reach it up to. Just get up and even do a single move in this day, but keep moving. Never stop. And the movement will create solutions, will create network, will create knowledge, and your growth will be accomplished through your journey by continuous movement through it. That is fantastic. Well, I, I, again, I am so honored to be talking. I'm to you. honored. And thank you so I'm much. Well. Thank you so much. This is, uh, These are just big know. words for me. I, actually, <laughs> I'm just enjoying a journey here and trying to do some good in the world. I always like to say that let's all do some ripples of good and love in the world and see them moving. But we Sam, what you're working on is, is incredible. Uh, and, and I know it's your passion, right? So yes. when you're working on, you might, Yes, you understand the gravity and the importance of the work that you're doing and the impact that you can have. But when I listen to you talk, I'm just like, does she really understand? Like she's working on nanotechnology that can heal wounds fast, that can stop bleeding. I mean, these are high demand medical solutions that that you're working on that could be critical for uh, medical treatment uh, Thank around you so much. the world. So keep doing what you're doing. I'm cheering. Thank for you so you. much. Flo. I'm I'm excited for you, and thank you so much for talking to me today. Uh, and for no, anyone, thank you so much for allowing this opportunity. Really, oh, I deeply pleasure. appreciate. It. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. And for anyone around the world, you heard it. You got to believe in yourself. You can and you will do it, and you got to yes. keep moving. That's the yes. my takeaway. Uh, yes. from today. So thank you so much for tuning in to this special series of Get Tech Smart Global Explosion. Stay tuned for more.